Yeah, it's Don't Stop, not Mr. Fahrenheit. Yeah. I knew, because it's like I when I always look that up. I know. We're talking about Shaun of the Dead today. Yeah. And right away we're talking about the bar scene. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's also like I I just so happen to be wearing a queen shirt as oh, well. Oh, word. So. It's almost like you knew that we were reviewing Shaun I did. of the Dead. And you I were did. like, ah, oh, like I the did. coolest part of this is the queen scene. Absolutely. But I mean, even from like the beginning of the movie, it's a great movie. It's a very funny movie. Yeah, it's really, really fucking funny. Like when he, when he's going to the store... And then he's like, he just leaves the money, walks out, doesn't know, no, just is fine the whole time. Yeah, just wa- walking about during his day, and you just see basically the world turning into an yeah. apocalyptic wasteland around him. Simon Pegg and Nick Frost starring in this one. Yeah, directly. Same ones who are also in, I'm sorry, same ones that were also in Hot Fuzz and At World's End. Or World's End? It's World's End. World's End? Yeah, sorry. I haven't personally seen it. But I recommend Shaun of the Dead, and uh, by proxy, if you really like those guys, get your fill with these, too. All three of those were directed by Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright, you might also know from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which, eh, is alright. It's not really my cup of tea, but I know it's a I mean, pretty you, critically acclaimed movie. I mean, I think it's like a... It. Yeah, I, I'm one of those people. I think it's a great movie. As well, he was an executive producer for Ant-Man. So there you go. MCU, so, you know, everyone likes that. Yeah, that means he's at least fucking paid. This one's on a budget of six million. Was and, it? And wouldn't you know it, it actually did thirty million at the box office. I can believe it. I can believe Pretty it. Pretty successful. I mean, to this day, I it think probably it still gets sold yeah. at DVD stores and is streamed. Mm-hmm. I'm sure lots of people still buy it from YouTube and stuff yeah, like that. Funny. I couldn't really name any other movies that like any of these other actors are in besides Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. But obviously, we got Simon Pegg in The Force Awakens. Yes. He does have that scene as the uh, quarter portion guy. Yes, I know that. One quarter portion. Yeah, he ended up ratting her out. Garbage series, anyway. Yeah, well, glad we're done with that until they shit out another three more. It's supposed to be a pre-prequel. Yeah, I know. No, uh, it's supposed to be like a pre-pre-pre-pre-pre-prequel. Like Knights of the Old Republic. Right. So off topic. Uh, yeah. Because anyway. Simon Pegg and Nick Frost are hilarious. But yeah. that's just how good they are that they appear in these other things because they're funny. Yeah, I see more of Simon Pegg than Nick Frost. Yeah. Absolutely. Doug. It's funny shit. And I mean, Paul. Yeah. Paul? Yeah. Paul is funny. Yeah. Paul is fucking funny. Seth Rogen in that. No, it's not better than Shaun of the Dead. What the fuck am I talking about? I almost said that, but... No, yeah, no. Because this is like... Eight years is a great movie. How about how this movie came out the same year as the remake of Dawn of the Dead? Yeah. The Zack Snyder reboot. Yeah. I mean, in like in comparison, comparison. Sorry, sorry. Comparison to to like spin-off movies and copycats, like the scary movies. This was done like tastefully, and like because obviously it was copying the 1978 version, not the one that Zack Snyder did. I can't wait for the Snyder Cut, though. They've really built that one up to uh, not possibly meet expectations. Did they? Because, I mean, like... With all I the know, fucking but, hype? Even, but, like, it's a completely different... I don't know. But it's like, I feel like they've just hyped it up film. as, like, don't... You thought that was bad? Don't... We weren't even trying, bro. bro. Seriously, bro? We have this, like... But there was... Watch it. And I just feel like it's he did in that, it's like, setting itself up it was a very like, ridiculous expectation. It, so <laughs> so Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, Edgar Wright, uh, among these guys, like this is kind of like a time where there was a lot of really good like British comedy stuff. Yeah. Obviously, we had Sasha Baron Cohen kind kind of around this time with um, Ali G in the house. This was like early two thousand stuff before he did like Borat and Bruno, even before that, Austin Powers. So. Yeah, and then like forgetting Sarah Marshall, Russell Brand, that whole era, get into the Greek, like, you know. Russell Brand yeah. is funny. Well, those movies were funny. Yeah, he does funny stand-up yeah, too. Those two movies were funny. Yeah, he's on Joe Rogan once too. Those two movies were funny. funny. Okay. I mean, how many spooky ghosts would you give this one? To? I'd probably go a 4.4. 4. A 4.4. A 4.4. He really, really likes this one. I do. Well, I mean, I it's mean, been right on that. now. It's my highest rated, but like that's because it's like just it's a good movie. Like I would rather watch this over any of the ones we've watched. I mean, the kids. This genuinely good horror makeup. Stuart Conrad there and the rest of the great. makeup team does a really, really good job with it. It kind of sets it aside from like where like a regular horror comedy is like part of the comedy is like when you see a close up of a zombie and he looks fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But these are 
It's fucking good. There's good, good blood and there's some good even, tearing apart scenes. Even the scene, you know, we already talked about it, obviously, in the beginning, but when they're just smashing the bartender, the the rifle, because they're obviously in London, they don't have guns or anything. So that was, you know, because that's a big thing in the zombie apocalypse. That, or I don't know why they couldn't find, like, a like, good axe or sword or something. I don't know. They had it at the very end. They I didn't know, but it, like... But they find one underneath the yeah, bar. Yeah, they went to it, and they should have went up. Like, tried to go up. Yeah, why make go sure they Yeah, make sure they couldn't get up. Well, they went underground to escape. Well, yeah, because that was Nick where they Frost, had to go. Nick Frost chilled and kept them down there while they escaped. And then, you know, it's sad because right then and there they go to the road and then they get rescued. You know, by the people that they were crossing, which that was a, that was a genuine funny moment in the movie when they're crossing their counter counterparts like of gender oh of yeah and it's all just the same people yeah it's all the gender. same people just gender swapped yeah. like the leader is a female followed by the guy she likes followed by the ex she doesn't like and i mean it's funny with at the end too like how he hangs on to his best friend and just has him sitting in a shed somewhere like he's a zombie but he still has yeah, enough sense funny. to like hold a video game controller even though yeah. he still tries to bite um Sean. They should have played, he should have played like an easier game with him. Yeah, whatever game they were playing. Yeah, it was the definitely like two. And then he was, he was like, he's like trying to like reach over. He's like, hey, like, dude, it's a zombie. Like, yeah, right. Well, it's funny at the end because they show them like they're working in grocery stores. They're on like the, uh, the game shows and stuff like that. Yeah, but, but that's like the great part about it, too. Like, because the absurdity. I would give this one a four for what it is. A um, four? Sticking with the four? I'm sticking with a four because, but that's somebody for me, um, a horror comedy only will do, like, I really like horror comedies, yeah. but during the Halloween season, I like things that are more on the heavier edge. So you're hitting it with the four, with the other four, and I'm hitting it with the 4.4 on this one. That's that's what it looks like we're doing here. Okay. But either way, I definitely recommend it, and it's definitely as far as horror comedies. So far, it's so right far up it's there with uh, scary the movie. Those are the ones I, that I, I like would, the most. The yeah, first three scary well, movies in this one. That's like a hard because those, but those are like childhood, like you know what I mean. That yeah, maybe. Like Not I watched. Because I feel the, like I, they would still be my favorites if I saw them now. But I feel like the thing is, because of where we are and where we grew up, we were more attracted to and drawn toward the scary movies, because they were like, all ripping off, you know, American things. Well, and it all started with Scream, a pretty good horror movie that also was self-aware of itself enough to make fun of itself. Yes. And then from there, we started getting scary movies. Yes. But that's what I'm saying, is that they were all, like, based on, like, you know, movies that were, like, American and... Yeah, it was all spoofs. Yeah, spoofs. Just like Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead. It's absolutely... I would watch it over the scary movies. That's what I'm trying to say. I feel like when we were kids, those were funnier. But, like, now, it's like, what would I rather watch? Like, that... It's more tasteful, Shaun of the Dead. Bottom line, Shaun of the Dead's pretty goddamn good. Yeah. And I'm running out of battery, so we might as well just fucking wrap this up. Yeah. Maybe you can... (laughs) Cut and... Shaun of the Dead. Fucking watch it.